investment bargains. If you want to make sound investment decisions... ...will be on display in Brighton. It's the 11th annual Coors Boston Invitational Rugby Tournament, and New England Cable News reporter Jimmy Young takes a look at this different brand of football. Ready, 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 ready. A scrum, a try, and a pitch may be as foreign to you as the game of rugby is in the United States. But believe it or not, next to England, there are more rugby players in the United States than any other country. Over 250,000 players. Now, while this scrum may look like organized mayhem to you and me, anyone who plays rugby knows that there's a certain style and skill that's involved in this sport. And, of course, anyone who plays it loves it. There you go. There you go. It talks football a hundred times. What's the, why do you say that? It's just the ultimate team sport. You know, it's tough. Everyone can be involved. It's spontaneous. I mean, you have to be educated about the game to really appreciate it. If, you know, someone who doesn't know the game was watching it, they really couldn't watch the flow and understand that everyone's involved at any moment in the game. Anyone can participate and do anything versus football where you do one thing for five second, ten second burst and you take a break and you get back into it. In rugby, anything goes. And there's a kind of creativity that when you get out in the field, uh, there's no stoppage of play. So it's a lot like soccer and it's fluidity, you know. But um, I played football also, and I just seem to get injured more often in football. Whereas rugby, you, you, you use finesse uh, over brute strength. You get a lot of contact and a lot of collisions, but uh, you never get the kind of injuries that you get in a football game. It's, uh, it's much more controlled. Controlled mayhem? Controlled mayhem is a good term, and it's been used quite often, and uh, it's always a good level of, of athleticism, especially for this tournament. Now that tournament gets underway at noon at the Monsignor Daly Field right on the Charles River Banks in Brighton. Teams from Wales, England, Scotland, and two from Canada, and three from the United States will make up the international field. As for the caliber of play, well, according to Bob Edgerton, not bad, considering that most U.S. players start playing in college, while the rest of the world introduces the game at Little League age. See, America has, has uh, a disadvantage in that most people take up the game fairly late in life. Now, I was very lucky in, in, in the country where I was born. We start playing when, when you're seven or eight years old. And uh, in Boston, most people generally start to play when they go to college. So there's a 20, you know, a, a 12 or 13 year break there before they, uh, before they start to develop. So people have to learn it very quickly here. And a lot of the, they, they still have a lot of rough edges. Athletically, they're, they're great, but there's still a few rough edges on them that uh, takes a little while to, to, uh, to iron out. Start where you start. Edgerton is one of Australia's greatest players, playing for his country's championship World Cup team. In Massachusetts this year, while his wife teaches, Edgerton has been lending his expertise to Boston's rugby club. I say to people that, you know, I'm playing with Bob Edgerton, and they don't know who he is. They don't, and then they know who I am, you know. They just don't realize that that guy's a national hero in Australia. You know, a guy like John Jeffries playing for Scotland is a household name, like a Larry Bird or Ray Bork would be. You know, the guy's a great flanker, and everyone knows who he is back in Scotland, and here he's coming to play in Boston in a tournament, and, uh, you know, to me, it's a, it's a huge thrill. All right, because what you tend to do is to step off that right foot and keep going. You don't want to hit the forwards over there, the ugly bastards. Rugby's got a very different... Uh, heel in this country than it has in many other countries. Uh, it's a very normal game to play in, in other places in the world. And, and you can't teach people character traits. All you can teach people is that they should play for uh, basically for fun. And that's a real difference between rugby and, and most professional sports is we're, we're out there playing purely for fun and uh, at a pretty reasonable level, I think. This weekend at the rugby tournament in Brighton, you'll find a great level of rugby on display, but the winner may not be the team that wins the most matches. It's great to win and it helps to win, but uh, teams are, are picked to, chosen to be the winner by their involvement, not only on the field, but off the field as well. That means attending the socials, uh, and in behaving in, in what we say is a, is a rugby-like manner. Exactly what is that? Well, show up this weekend at Daly Field in Brighton and find out. But you better bring your party hat if you catch my drift, mate. Jimmy Young, New England Cable News. You can't get weather any better than this in New England. Tim Kelly's here to tell us if it's going to continue. It's going to continue for at least another 24 hours, Stephanie. But uh, Sunday midday is my biggest concern right now. Front comes through early Sunday. Some clouds lagging behind it may dim the sunshine.